Welcome to the case studies for best practice for heat generation. My name is Anna Vulpetti and I'm going to describe how heat finding approaches have been used to identify small molecule factor D inhibitors targeting the alternative complement pathway. The complement system is a major component of the innate immune system. Its activation is achieved by three different pathways the classical, the lectin, and the alternative. The alternative pathway is constitutively active and depends on the spontaneous hydrolysis of the third component of the complement, called C3. This provides the first rapid response of the innate immune system by depositing C3B on the pathogen cell surface, which triggers the recruitment of the plasma protein, factor B. Factor D, which is a serine protease, cleaves factor B only when it is in complex with the C3B to form C3B BB, known as the C3 convertase. C3 convertase, by cleaving more C3, triggers the amplification loop. So factor D plays a key role in the activation and in the amplification of the alternative pathway. The cascade reaction of the complement system continues, ultimately leading to the formation of membrane attack complex, which leads to membrane disruption and cell lysis. This regulation of the alternative pathway predisposes individuals to a variety of diseases, such as age-related macular degeneration and others. Factor D circulates in blood in its self-inhibited form, which is characterized by three unique structural features with respect to the uh, serine protease family. An atypical conformation of the catalytic triad, here reported in green, the presence of a self-inhibitory loop, reported in purple, which renders the non-prime site used by many protease inhibitors inaccessible to ligand binding. And then a unique salt bridge between the residues arginine 218 and aspartate 189 at the bottom of the S1 pocket. The proteolytic activity of factor D requires a conformational change, which occurs uh, upon binding to uh, the complex C3B factor B. HDS, uh, so high throughput screening of all the Novartis uh, uh, compound collection, fail to deliver validated hits. So in the next uh, slide, I'm going to describe uh, the heat finding approaches we apply to identify small molecule inhibitors of factor D. Because of the low ligandability of the target, we use different heat finding approaches in parallel in order to increase the success rate in identifying uh, potential inhibitors. The different approaches and techniques are summarized in this slide. We use a structure-based, knowledge-based uh, library design approach around a proling scaffold. Then we use a structure-based approach to design a target-specific, so tar uh, factor D-specific focus set of fragments. And then we combine these approaches with the uh, fragment-based screenings, which despite providing only few validated hits, thus confirming the low ligandability of this target, had a key impact on lead optimization. So uh, we decided to synthesize a library around the proline scaffold. But why a proline? Proline-based inhibitors are very well known uh, in protease field. Most of them bind towards the non-prime site in addition to S1 pocket. Here you see an example shown in violet of a proline derivative bound to trypsin, another protease. But the self-inhibitory loop of factor D renders the non-prime site inaccessible, so incompatible with this binding mode. The in-house uh, solved X-ray structure of a proline derivative bound to another protease 
Classical Ikerin 7, shown in yellow, provided a very attractive conceptual input for factor detail or design, because the Calicrin 7 proline binding pose towards the prime site was instead considered compatible with the topology of the factor D active site. Despite all the Calicrin 7 inhibitors were tested as inactive towards factor D, we hypothesize that the proline core could bind similarly to calicarin 7 in factor D as a very uh, well uh, nicely anchored scaffold at the S1 prime pocket forming two hydrogen bond and providing suitable vectors for extension towards the S1 and S2 prime pockets. 20 compounds were selected for synthesis based on the docking of the enumerated virtual library to the factor D X-ray structure and screen by an enzymatic assay, delivering the first attractive hits. This enabled the determination of the first X-ray structure of the first non-covalent factor D inhibitor, also confirming the binding uh, hypothesis. In parallel to the library design around the proline, we perform also an in silico fragment docking. A set of uh, uh, about 50,000 fragments was docked against factor D. Top scored poses were clustered and selected by vision inspection. And a final set, a selected set of uh, 192 fragments, was screened then at 100 uh, micromolar nominal concentration in mixtures of eight compounds each by using the ligand observe water logs in the MAM method, obtaining one hit. Because the low solubility of this hit, about 30 micromolar, protein observed to the HSQC uh, NMR measurement did not provide evidence of binding. X-ray, both using soaking and co-crystallization, also failed most likely due to the limited solubility combined with low affinity of the molecule. However, the molecule was a clear waterlogged heat, as highlighted by the positive peaks in the NMR, uh, waterlogged NMR spectrum reported at the bottom left of the slide. Based on the generated binding pose, a carboxylic acid was added at the putative solvent exposed region to make the compound more soluble. Indeed, the compound shown on the right with the carboxylic acid was more soluble with a sol measured solubility of about 2 millimolar, and this enhanced solubility enabled the confirmation by protein observed NMR showing concentration dependent chemical shift changes in the HSQC NMR spectrum uh, reported at the bottom and uh, they um, enable the determination of the KD uh, of about 1.6 millimolar. The crystal structure was also determined showing the carboxamide indole in the S1 pocket. The superimposition of this X-ray structure with the one obtained uh, for the proline series prompt us to merge both inhibitors. The combination of the carboxamide from the water logs heat with the indole group of a proline derivative, both circled in red, led to the uh, compound shown on the upper right, with a remarkable 40-fold improvement in affinity and improved binding efficiency index and lipophilic ligand efficiency. The subsequent optimization efforts focus on improving binding interactions in combination with optimizing the ADMI profile. So this uh, leads to the compound shown uh, on the bottom right, uh, a nanomolar compound, which also demonstrated the in vivo efficacy in a factor D mouse model. In addition to the target-based focus set of fragments, we also screen two preparatory fragment libraries. The core library, a fragment library for different screening methods, and we screen it by protein observe NMR, SPR, and enzymatic uh, assay. And uh, this screening did not deliver any validated hits. We also screen our in-house library called LEF 
which stands for Local Environment of Fluorine, which is a library composed of fluorinated fragments containing CF3, CF2, CF motifs specifically designed for a flora NMR screening method. We screen it at low concentration in mixtures of 30 compounds each by using the Ligan Observer flora NMR direct method, obtaining five uh, very weak hits. All the five hits contain a fluorine ACF motif and here I'm showing uh, the structure of two of them. On the right, it's shown a close-up of the fluoro NMR spectra recorded in the absence and in the presence of factor D protein. As you can notice, one signal does not change its intensity upon addition of factor D, whereas the other signal disappears from the spectrum in the presence of the protein. This is an indication of a binding event. The chemical shift of all the uh, molecules in the mixture are known, and thus the identification of the active molecule in the, mixtures, in the mixture is a straightforward process. The binding of the left hits could not be confirmed by 2D protein observer HSQC. Also, X-ray structure could not be obtained and we attributed this to the very low affinity of these fragments. But why sometimes there is no consensus in its validation among different biophysical methods? We have to consider that X-ray and protein observing MR, as well as other biophysical techniques, can detect a very weak binders, but they require highly soluble compounds the tested concentration must be comparable to the KT or higher. Ligand-based NMR methods can detect hits with low solubility and with a solubility lower than their KD value. This is possible because the molecules are tested at a concentration lower than their KD. The large dynamic range of the fluorine NMR uh, allows the detection of even weaker binders. In the absence of uh, an X-ray structure and validation by other biophysical techniques, we follow up the left hits by performing a sub-archive search for related analogs in the Novartis compound collection. About 50 close analogs were selected by docking to the similarity substructure searches with the aim of finding compounds with improved potency and good solubility to enhance the probability of a successful crystal uh, structure determination. The compounds were screened in a fluoron NMR reporter assay. And it's important to remind that the presence of fluorine atoms in the tested molecules in this case is not required. One compound for which the X-ray structure could be solved is shown on the right. The compound showed a Ki of about 500 micromolar, measured by fluoro-NMR reporter assay, and also confirmed by protein observed NMR. The new phenyl cyclopropanil S2 prime binding motif was subsequently merged with the proline series, leading to potent uh, nanomolar factor D inhibitors. A follow up fragment hopping was also carried out on the compound just described by performing a molecular fields ligand based 3D similarity search. Out of the only five fragments, selected by carefully visual inspection, one was found to have a Ki value of about K, 500 uh, micromolar, as determined by Florian MR reporter assay. The predicted binding mode based on molecular fields was confirmed by X-ray structure crystallography. This approach was quite successful in producing an additional starting point for optimization with a limited screening effort by capitalizing on all the structural knowledge acquired uh, at that point. So in summary, this is an example of a challenging target with a low ligand ability and with no heat coming from HTS.
high throughput screening. What was key for generating very potent low nanomolar compounds was an integrated heat finding strategy, which combined the use of computational approaches, biophysical methods, mainly X-ray and NMR, and parallel chemistry. So as described uh, during this webinar, we started by this designing a factor detail or proline based library, allowing the rapid identification of a factor D inhibitor with the micromolar affinity. In parallel, the NMR screening of an in silico focus library and of the in-house left fluorinated fragment library identified novel S1 and S2 prime binding motifs which were key to improve on, improve on the proline series potency. In two cases, I have also shown has the improvement of the solubility or the affinity of the initial fragment hits was critical for obtaining 2D protein observed NMR validation and X-ray structure determination. Thank you for listening and goodbye.